Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting edition of Apprentice School Basketball taking place right here in Newport News, Virginia, on the campus of Newport News Shipbuilding right here in the Apprentice School Athletic Center. So glad you could join us on this beautiful January Saturday here in Newport News, Virginia. Hello, everyone. Howard McCain here to bring you this afternoon's play-by-play -play action as it happens. Dave Davenport is our engineer producer where today the Wildcats out of Johnson & Wells, Charlotte, will be taking on your apprentice school builders here. Led by Coach Evan Key, who brings his basketball team into this afternoon's contest with an overall record of 14-4, and 3-1 and in conference. Now, the last time we were with you, we were actually undefeated in conference play, but the builders suffered their first loss in conference in, uh, in quite some time, as a matter of fact, against Blue Lights College by a score of 99-83. to 83. So Coach is eager to get his team right back on the court where they can get the bad, sour taste of that loss out of their mouth and they can get back to their winning ways. But, folks, it is going to be a tough one because they are taking on Coach Mark Slade and the 8-8 eight and eight Johnson and Whale, Wild, Wales Wildcats. Now, don't let the record fool you. They have played a very, very tough schedule so far in this season, 8-8 eight and eight overall. They are 4-5 and five on the road. Now, why does that matter? They're on the road today playing against a builder team that is undefeated here on their home court. So something has to give here this afternoon. Hopefully, it will be the builders getting out of here with a victory. Right now, both starting lineups are being introduced. Both teams will be making their way to the midcourt logo, and we'll be tipping things off here momentarily. Your officials for this afternoon's contest are Kelvin Oliver. Garrett Jones and Daniel Elliott will make sure that the guys are doing things the way they're supposed to do on the court. Looking forward to a great basketball contest this afternoon. Good to see the builders back here at home, having been gone for quite some time. So, again, builders looking back, looking to get back to their winning ways. Still currently ranked number one in USCAA play. We're underway, and the tip is saved from going out of bounds by the Wildcats, and the Wildcats will counter. The Builders starting five with their own, Nathan Mashita, Cameron Lawson, Ethan Smith, Jalen Benson Hollenhead, and Jabin Mars are your starting five as we get a traveling violation. That'll be a turnover. Cameron Lawson dragged his pivot foot, so the Builders forced the first turnover of the afternoon. This is a Wildcat program that will come into this afternoon's contest, averaging about 16 turnovers per game. Builders with their starting five, of course, with the basketball right now is Donovan Means. He's joined on the floor by Kyrie Smith with the basketball, Kelby Saunders Jr., Isaiah Jones, and that first shot by Aiden Adrian Walls is no good, so the Builders back on defense while the Wildcats are pushing. Wildcats underneath, shot blocked, but there's going to be a foul underneath. That foul call is going to go on Isaiah Jones. That'll be Isaiah Jones's first personal foul and the team's first. So according to Mark Slade, who's the head basketball coach for the Charlotte Johnson and Wells Charlotte men's basketball program, he's in his first season at the helm as their head coach told me that his team pretty much takes what the, the, the flow of the game gives them offensively. They're not really a running team. They're not really a grinded out in the half court type of team as Nathan Mashita is able to make both free throws and the Wildcats are out to an early two to nothing lead here. As we are underway, first half of action here at the Apprentice School Athletic Center. Builders working over to Saunders. His long three point shot is money. Builders now with a 3-2 lead. Builders shooting about 37% from the three-point arc on the season. 
As Coach Evan Key implores his team to turn up the defensive pressure. It's Means puts a lot of pressure on Mashida. Mashida almost turned it over in the backcourt. But that led to an easy putback for Cameron Lawson. And the Wildcats now have a 4-3 to three lead over the Builders. Here's Donovan Means working against the Wildcat man-to-man -man defense. Means able to get through the heart of the defense, kick out to Wall. His shot no good, but we have a foul underneath on the attempted putback. That foul call. That will go on Jalen Benson Holland head. That'll be his first personal foul and the team's first. So that puts Isaiah Jones at the free throw line, the six foot nine sophomore out of Rocky Mount. Looks to get onto the scoring uh, into the scoring column, and he does. Four to four is our score as Nantambu Calhoun makes his way onto the floor for the Wildcats. We're tied at four. And the second free throw is up and good. So Isaiah Jones with his first two of the basketball game, and that gives the Builders a 5-4 to four lead. Quick outlet off of the inbound for the Wildcats. Builders turn up the defensive pressure once again, and he forced another turnover right in front of the bench. Cameron Lawson dribbled the basketball off of his leg out of bounds, so the defensive pressure is working early in the contest for the Builders. They forced the second turnover of the afternoon for Mark Slade's team. That long three-point shot, no good. Builders come away with the loose ball. Shot clock reset. It's now down to 15. Wall nearly traveled with the basketball. That was close. Shot clock now we're at 10 with Saunders. Saunders, step back jumper. Off the glass. Now, if this was a game of horse, Saunders would have had to call that shot off the glass, but thankfully this isn't. Builders. Turn up the pressure again defensively. That pressure has the Wildcats somewhat rattled offensively, but not there. As the Wildcats are able to put the put back off of the weak side rebound up and good for two. Jabin Mars with his first bucket of the afternoon. And the Builders lead is now down to one, seven to six. 17-22 remaining in the first half of action. And According to coach, again, Mark Slade, he's in his first season at the helm for this basketball team. Again, 8-8, eight 4-5 and, eight, and five on the road. They just recently came up with a, a victory over Regent University. But uh, he did say again, you know, these guys are unaware that they actually have never lost to the Builders. You heard me right. In eight contests between these two programs, the Builders are yet to defeat Johnson and Wales. So, of course, the Wildcats won't be thinking about that today while they're on the court, but that is something that we fans will definitely be rooting for, that we can get out of here with our first win over Johnson and Wales. 17-18 remaining. Means off of a screen. Finds Smith. Smith launches. His three no good. Loose ball poked around. Last touch by the Wildcats. Means set the inbound underneath his own basket. Finds Wall. Wall tried to test the baseline, but I believe it was foul on his approach to the basket, and he was. So Cameron Lawson picks up his first personal foul. That'll be the team's second. So we'll try it again underneath the basket with the inbound. Here's Wall again. Baseline. Wall again. <laughs> Able to move it around the perimeter to Saunders. His three-pointed tip, no good, but there. For the putback is Isaiah Jones. Isaiah Jones with his fourth point of the afternoon. And the builder lead is now 9-6. to six. Builders, pressure in the, in the backcourt. Wildcats able to get it over the timeline. Builders still coming with that defensive pressure. Creates another turnover. Outlet to Means. Means could not. Control the pass from Saunders, so that'll be a turnover for the Builders. But Coach Evan Key and the defense have really found something here, putting that pressure on the Wildcats in the backcourt. Back. 
Here's Ethan Smith. Smith takes the shot, gets his own rebound. Shot clock reaches to 20. Kelby Saunders with the foul, but that's going to be credited to Kelby Saunders. That'll be his first personal foul. He had the block, but of course he did get him with the body. So we had a whistle. Now, Ethan Smith is going to step to the line to shoot two. Okay, so Kelby Saunders was issued a – he was actually issued a technical foul. I think that's his second – that'll be his second personal foul. Now, I did see after the play was over, there was a little bit of trash talking going on between Saunders and Ethan Smith. So in that exchange, they get Saunders, that where they hit Saunders with the technical. So it's going to put Cameron Lawson at the free throw line. Lawson averaging about 10 and a half points per game is able to hit the. F so it's not a, a two shot technical, just a one. Well, wait, it is. Wait a minute. It is a two shot technical. Lawson hits them both. So Ethan Smith will go back to the line now to shoot two. Kelby Saunders is going to have a seat. He's going to be replaced on the floor by Courage Harrell. So the officials looking to maintain control of the basketball game early on by issuing the personal, oh, I'm sorry, the technical foul on top of the personal foul. So the builders now have three team fouls. And that'll send Saunders to the bench with two as the second by Ethan Smith rims around and rattles out. We're tied nine to nine here. A little bit over 16 minutes left is Wall. Harrell tried to get it into Wall. It may have been, and it was. Nice hustle by the Wildcats on the baseline to get to the basketball, knock it off of a builder, and it went out of bounds, and they themselves turned the basketball right back over. So for Coach Mark Slade, that has to be frustrating. Now they commit about 13 turnovers. I'm sorry, they commit about 16 turnovers a game, so they're well on their way, the Wildcats are, to hitting that mark. The ball goes down on the baseline to Jones. Jones tried to get it to Harrell. Saved by Wall. Shot clock at five. But Wall doesn't care. He knocks down the three. And that pushes the builder lead up to three, 12 to nine now. Builders with some light pressure in the backcourt. Feed inside. Nothing there for Hollenhead, so he gets it out to Smith. Smith with 10 on the shot clock. Smith is going to be called for the travel as he drug his pivot foot. So that'll be the fifth turnover of the first half for the visiting Wildcats, and we're going to get a timeout. Media timeout, the under-16 timeout. Builders lead by a score of 12-9 to over the Wildcats. We'll step away, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. I am Fatima Medina and I work for HII, building the most powerful ships in the U.S. Navy. The digital technology I use is a generational change in the way that we build ships, making the construction of aircraft carriers more efficient. Plus, I get to work with veterans. Thanks to them, we all have our freedom and we need to work hard to keep it. I am Fatima Medina and I work for HII. 
The Wildcats have already committed five turnovers here. We're only uh, a little over four minutes, close to five minutes into the basketball game. Builders have really turned up the defensive intensity as that shot, that long three comes off. Rebound taken by the Wildcats. Here's Lawson. Lawson with four points in the contest already. Tries to take Kyrie Smith off the dribble. His shot no good. Smith working off of a ball screen from Jones. Shot clock now at 20 with Wall. Wall decides to launch. His three, bottom. Adrian Wall with his second three-point shot of the contest. Wall now with six on the afternoon. He leads all scores in the contest, and that pushes the Builder lead now to six. Builders continue to come after the Wildcats hard on defense as that, that, that ball is slapped away and blocked. Coach Evan Key is absolutely loving the defensive effort being shown by the Builders as Coach Slade makes the, a substitution. Jabin Mars will make his way back into the basketball game. Wildcats inbound. Shot clock now at five. That shot off the glass. Nice job by Nathan Mashita. Builders quickly back on offense, attacking the rim. Unable to get it go is Mim, Means. But Harrell finds Jones. Jones, not really his shot. He's more of the two to three foot variety. As that hustle on defense by Donovan Means denies the easy basket for the Wildcats. So the basketball will remain on this end. 13-42 left in the first half. Inbound, inside. That shot up and off the glass, good by Mashita. Tough shot by Mashita, but able to get it to go. So Mashita now with four. Here's Means, Means, all the way to the rim for the easy right-handed layup, and the builder lead is now four. I believe this is the largest lead of the contest for the builders, and they've sort of pulled, come off of their pressure defense just a tad as that corner three is going to miss absolutely everything. And Donovan Means back on the other end with the basketball. Took his man off the dribble, stepped back, and just shoved it in his face. So the builders starting to get hot from the three-point arc, and their largest lead now goes from four to seven as the builders once again turn up the defensive intensity. Mashita tries to work inside. They're going to call a jump ball. Or are they? Nope. I thought I saw both thumbs go in the air, indicating a jump ball situation, but instead it's going to be a foul call. That's going to go on Adrian Means. That'll be his first personal foul, and the team's fourth is Avon Hawkins. Clifton Good make their way into the contest for the Builders. Builders deny the inbound, nearly get the five-second call. I believe we're going to get a traveling violation on Benson Hollenhead. So I believe that will be the sixth turnover forced by the builders early in this contest. So we're at about the 12 and a half mark, and they've already committed six turnovers. With the pace that they're going on, they're going to commit somewhere uh, around about 24 turnovers in the contest as Courage Harrell gets into the act of hitting it from the three-point arc, and the builders are hot from outside, and that forces a timeout. Timeout taken by Mark Slade. That'll be a full timeout, I believe. That'll be a full timeout. Builders 23, Wildcats 13. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. 
That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit bayportcu.org to learn more. I am Fatima Medina, and I work for HII, building the most powerful ships in the U.S. Navy. The digital technology I use is a generational change in the way that we build ships, making the construction of aircraft carriers more efficient. Plus, I get to work with veterans. Thanks to them, we all have our freedom, and we need to work hard to keep it. I am Fatima Medina, and I work for HII. Howard McCain here, back at courtside, bringing you play-by-play -play action. Dave Davenport, who was uh, not criticized by Nicki Minaj for not rapping on the beat. Here as our engineer producer for this afternoon's contest as the Wildcats from Johnson and Wales able to score off of the timeout. Much needed timeout by the Wildcats. The builders, prior to that, that timeout, really heating things up. From behind the three-point arc, Builders shooting about 32% on the season. But right now, Builders shooting about 45% from behind the arc. Right now, Bills currently 5 of 11. Here's Harrell with 10 shot seconds on the shot clock. Loses it inside. I think that was last touch by the Wildcats, and it was. So the basketball will remain on this end as Ethan... Smith, along with Brandon Summers, they come into the basketball game. Brandon Summers, a six, looks like he's a six foot six. That's him defending the basketball. It's good. Tries to force one up off the glass. Rebound comes off to the Wildcats. Here's Lawson. Loose ball underneath in the lane. Builders come away with it. Here's Means. Means. It's going to be a reach in foul call. That call is going to go on Cameron Lawson. That'll be his second personal foul. The team's third. Right now, neither team in any danger of going into the bonus. Builders with only four team fouls. Wildcats with three is Hawkins. His first shot from three is good. So the Builders now 6 of 12 from behind the arc. That's 50%. Builders forced the turnover with the pressure defense in the backcourt. Harrell goes up and up against the defense. Shot goes down and count the foul. So count the bucket at the foul. That foul call is going to go on Nathan Mashita. That is his first personal foul in the team's fourth. And that quickly gets Isaiah Escobar into the contest for the Wildcats, and that'll send Harrell to the free throw line to shoot a single free throw. Courage Harrell coming into this afternoon's contest, averaging about six points per game. As the free throw goes down. Builder lead quickly and quietly has ballooned to 14 points over the Wildcats, and remember, Coming into this afternoon, the Builders are winless all time against this Wildcat basketball team. Of course, not this edition, but historically they are winless against this ball club. Ethan Smith able to back his way down into the lane for an easy shot. The three to four footer good. So Smith now with five on the afternoon. Builder league now at 12 as they work the perimeter. Evan, here's Evan, Haw Evan Hawkins, careful. Almost shuffled his feet there with his step back jumper from three, no good. Rell, able to bank it off the glass for two for his first bucket of the afternoon. And the builder lead now is down to 10. As that one from a Courage Harrell trickles over the front of the rim and in for three and the builder lead is kicked back up to 13. Builders once again coming with pressure in the backcourt. Nice job of drawing the defense and then dishing it off 
to Benson Hollenhead for the easy dunk. Just another noisy two on the glass. So the builder lead now is the 11. It's good. Works the perimeter. Here's Hawkins. Shot clock now at 10 with Harrell working on Smith. Harrell, step through. Means inside. His shot up off the glass, no good. Rebound cleared by the Wildcats. Quickly down court, Mashita. Mashita went right into Clifton Good, but they're going to whistle good with the foul. Possibility Clifton may not have had his feet set. Trying to draw the charge, he wasn't able to do so. A couple of builders into the basketball game. Isaiah Jones will make his way back onto the floor along with Montrell Jackson. So neither team in the bonus yet. That foul was not committed in the act of shooting, so the Wildcats will inbound. Here's Lawson working against Jackson. Lawson, good if it goes from three. Loose ball knocked around, comes off to Smith. His shot, no good, back comes Means. Means. Tries to go behind the back and work off of a screen at the same time. A lot going on right there. It's Hawkins. Gets it to Jackson. Jackson tries to feed it inside to Isaiah Jones, but the pass did not quite have the angle or the English on it to get it to Jones, so it's another turnover for the builders. I believe that's only the third turnover in the basketball game for the builders in the first half. That's pretty good. Of course, you want you would love to end the contest with none. As Escobar handles the basketball, gives it off to Smith. Wildcats work the perimeter. Shot clock at 15. Kick in the corner to Lawson. His shot from three is good. So the Builders see their 14-point lead trimmed down to eight, 32 to 24. After that long corner three, which is actually the shortest distance three on the basketball court from Lawson, the corner three. Here's Mishita to Smith, guarded closely by Harrell. Harrell pokes it away, Means gets it over to Harrell. He is fouled by Smith. So that'll send Courage Harrell to the line to shoot two. And for Ethan Smith, that is his first personal foul and the team's fifth. And we're going to have a stoppage and play a timeout. I believe this is going to be a media timeout. 7.05 remaining in the first half. Builders with an eight-point lead. We'll be back with more. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. I am Fatima Medina and I work for HII, building the most powerful ships in the U.S. Navy. The digital technology I use is a generational change in the way that we build ships, making the construction of aircraft carriers more efficient. Plus, I get to work with veterans. Thanks to them, we all have our freedom and we need to work hard to keep it. I am Fatima Medina and I work for HII. Builders right now with the edge in bench points, 12 to two over the Wildcats as Harrell will step to the line to try to shoot two, and he makes the first of two. And again, Harrell comes into this afternoon's contest averaging about six points per game. He already has 10. 
Builders currently 100% at the free throw line. And that is the way it will remain. They're five for five shooting free throws. And the builder lead is pushed back up to 10 now. As the builders with some light pressure in the backcourt. Again, the pressure defense was really working early in the contest. Forcing turnovers by the Wildcats, who currently sit at nine right now for the game. As Machida forces a jumper. Hawkins throws it ahead to Wall. Wall decides to pull from three. That one's short. Quick shot that time by the Builders. Back come the Wildcats with Lawson. Lawson just hit a three a moment ago in the deep corner as his shot for two, no good. Wall pushes to Jackson. Jackson to Hawkins. Hawkins. Misses from three, but the loose ball comes off to the Builders. That one goes out of bounds. They're going to say it was last touched by Avon Hawkins. So that'll be turnover number five for the Builders. Builders averaging about 13 turnovers per game coming into this afternoon's contest. As Escobar gets it over to Mishita who's able to get it inside to Holland head. Puts on a couple of moves in the base, I'm sorry, in the um, paint, and he's able to score. Johnson and Wales with a 16 to six lead in point paints. As the builders turn it over, that's their sixth. Here's Smith, Smith has his pocket picked on the spin move by Avon Hawkins. That's the way to not give up on defense, and neither did the Wildcats as they're able to poke it away from Courage Harrell. So the basketball will stay on this end as Kyrie Smith comes back into the contest along with Jabin Mars. Mars averaging about nine points per game. Builder lead at eight right now. Plenty of time on the shot clock, but Avon Hawkins, Avon Hawkins, we don't care about no stinking shot clock. So he hits the corner three, and Avon Hawkins now with six in the contest. And the builder lead quietly has made it back up to 11. We saw it get it trimmed down, trimmed down to eight after being up by 14, but we are going to get a travel violation on the baseline. That's going to be another turnover now. That is now double-digit turnovers for Coach Mark Slade and his Wildcats. That turnover will get Escobar some time on the bench as Calhoun comes in. Then Tom Boomer Calhoun into the contest as that long three by Adrian Wall comes off no good, Adrian able to knife between the defense. Beautiful job of passing inside by Isaiah Jones to hit a cutting Adrian Wall to the basket. He's able to bank it off the glass for two and the builder lead now is up to 13. Again, builders have led by as much as 14 in the contest and have an opportunity here to go up by their largest point total. Well, that's going to wait as that fast break opportunity is thwarted. Right now, neither team has any fast break points in the contest. Wall finds a cutting Smith along the baseline. Smith was unable to handle it. And that leads to a fast break opportunity, possible three point play, and it will be for the Wildcats. So they're gonna count the basket. They're gonna credit that foul to Avon Hawkins. That'll be the team six. I didn't see where Avon Hawkins had his feet set up, but I think he was set up defensively as a possibility his heels may have been in the restricted area. And if that is the case, then that is going to be a foul called on Hawkins, which it was. So Clifton Good will make his way into the contest. And I'll put Nantambu Calhoun at the line to try to complete the three-point play. He now has three on the afternoon, and the builder lead is trimmed to 10 now. 
Shade over four minutes left in the first half of this afternoon's contest. Builders coming in, still ranked number one in USCAA this season. Even after the loss to Blue Lights College is Kyrie Smith. Decides to take matters into his own hands and scores the basketball in the builder lead. It's now 12. So the builders suffering their first loss in conference play. As we are going to get another timeout, we'll talk about that a little bit after we get back. 338 remaining in the first half here at the Apprentice School Athletic Center. Builders with a comfortable 12 point lead over the Wildcats of Johnson Wells will be back. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. I am Fatima Medina, and I work for HII building the most powerful ships in the U.S. Navy. The digital technology I use is a generational change in the way that we build ships, making the construction of aircraft carriers more efficient. Plus, I get to work with veterans. Thanks to them, we all have our freedom and we need to work hard to keep it. I am Fatima Medina and I work for HII. Prior, good, welcome back everyone, prior to the break, I was telling you that the Builders suffered their first loss in conference play. Now, the Builders play in the New South Athletic Conference, and they uh, took on Blue Lights College at their, at their facility earlier, and they actually lost that contest 99-83 to as Wall works off of a ball screen. Hawkins, he launches from three. That one no good. Rebound taken by the Wildcats. And the Builders suffered their first conference loss. And according to Coach Evan Key, it was just a really weird night. They lost 99 to 83. And if you've never seen their facility, their facilities aren't as spacious as the Builder uh, facility is, the Athletic Center. So that kind of affected their play somewhat. Place is kind of small, a lot of wood walls and things like that. Coach said it was kind of like uh, playing inside of a church. And the builders just didn't look comfortable. Coach said that was one of the most, that was one of the horrible, most, that was one of the worst games they ever played. So Blue Lights was able to knock off the number one team in USCAA play as the Wildcats come back quickly. Shot by Mashita is no good, and back come the builders. That's going to be a foul call. Clifton Good will get an opportunity to go through the line as he absorbs the hard foul from Jalen Benson Hollenhead. He's going to pick up his second personal foul in the team six. So that'll put Clifton Good at the line. Clifton Good coming into this afternoon's contest, averaging about five points a game. As he gets himself into the scoring column. So Brandon Summers off the bench for Mark Slade and the Wildcats. And one more upcoming free throw for Clifton Good. Builders have forced the Wildcats into 11 turnovers, and they've converted those 11 turnovers into 16 points as the second free throw by Good is missed. That is the first miss this afternoon from the free throw line for the Builders. And we are gonna get a traveling violation. Whistled on the visiting Wildcats. That'll be their 12th turnover of the first half. And I just told you a second ago, Builders have turned those turnovers into 16 points. Build a lead now 13 as they look to build on it. Smith off of a ball screen from Good, and I think he is gonna travel so that'll be the eighth turnover for the Builders in the first half. Right there, right there, right there. Go back 
Builders. Some light pressure there by Hawkins. Here's Lawson. Off of the screen from Hollenhead. Lawson. Contested jumper, no good, but they're going to say he is fouled. So Kyrie Smith picks up his first personal foul. That's the team's seventh. So Lawson will go to the line now with the Wildcats in the bonus for the next 142. Official pulling double duty right now. He is the uh, official and he's the mop guy. So Lawson, looking to add to his point total of nine. He does just that. He now has 10 in the contest. Builder lead now at 12. Builder lead now at 11. As we get a timeout. 142 left in the first half. Builders with a commanding 11 point lead as I believe that timeout was taken by Coach Evan Key. So the Wildcats will be in the bonus for the next 142. Builders one foul away from being in the bonus themselves, but Builders have really, really been efficient with those opportunities that have been created by the turnovers that the defense has forced. So far, they have 16 points off of 12 turnovers by Coach Mark Slade and his Wildcats who again come into this afternoon's contest with an overall record of eight and eight. But if you go and look at their schedule, don't let their eight and eight record fool you. They have taken on some tough competition and a lot of the tough competition that they played have been on the road. And I don't care what level of sport you play on, when you play on the road, it is just simply tough to go into somebody else's house and win a basketball game, football game, Basketball, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the sport is. Hockey, it doesn't matter. It's hard to win on the road. So here's Lawson. Tried to get the feed inside the Holland head, but his pass is picked off and the builders turn it over. Lawson. His long rebound off of the three miss comes back to the Wildcats, but this time that long three-point attempt by Mars Misses everything and goes out of bounds. So we're now under a minute. Builders still holding to an 11 point lead. There have only been three lead changes in the contest this afternoon. Builders, once they seize the lead, they haven't given it up, haven't really been in any danger of losing it. Builders have been up by as many as 14 as the Builders turn it over and commit the foul. Well, they're not going to call the foul. They're going to call a kick ball. So I believe it's going to stay with the builders as Means will make his way into the contest. So no turnover. So here's Harrell, leading scorer for the builders in the contest with 11 so far. Wall, Wall working, 10 on the shot clock. Wall tries to find somebody or an open shot. Shot clock now with three, Kyrie Smith launches it. Rebound, on loose ball off the rebound is controlled by the Wildcats. That three point attempt no good, we're now down to five. Four, Harrell weaving. Three, Harrell looking, can't find anyone. He launches, that's good if it goes, and it doesn't. And that is how the first half of action will end here at the Apprentice School Athletic Center. As we make our way into the half locker room, the Builders with an 11-point lead, 42-31 to 31 over the Wildcats of Johnson and Wales out of Charlotte, North Carolina. We'll step away, we'll refresh ourselves, we'll be back with second half action and first half sets right after this, Builders lead at the half.
The thing that sets Whirlies apart is that our people here truly care. They're here because they love their jobs and they want to learn more. What I like about Whirlies is the people. Uh, the team I work with every day. My favorite thing about working at Whirlies is that it's more like a family. I mean, it is work, but it's not. They actually treat me like a person and not a number. And this is the first company where I really feel like I belong. Here at Whirlies, it's a great atmosphere. Uh, they really care about the customers, really care about the employees. Uh, we do whatever we got to do to make the job right. I like the team. Everybody's a team player. Um, all about doing the right thing for the customer, taking pride in your work. It's just overall a great company to work for. You know, we really do have an awesome set of guys. It's kind of cool. We got a great team. We have fun together. From my plumbers to my air conditioning guys to my crawl space guys, everybody like works together as a team. Um, they're just phenomenal. We have training programs. We like it when people come in, they don't really know what they want to do, and we're able to help them find a trade and do things such as like a paid for apprenticeship programs for HVAC, plumbing, electrical. Uh, we've sent people as far as Texas to also doing them here locally. We just truly like to see our people grow and succeed and get to the next step of their career. We want people here who truly aspire to be the best in their, in their fields.
Welcome back, everyone. We are close to starting the second half of action here at the Apprentice School Athletic Center on this beautiful, beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Newport News, Virginia. So glad you could join us. Once again, Howard McCain, Dave Davenport is our engineer producer for this afternoon's contest between the Wildcats of Johnson and Wells and your Apprentice School Builders. And right now, the Builders, as we're now under a minute remaining in the halftime break. Builders up right now by 11, 42 to 31. So for the visiting Wildcats of Mark Slade and the Johnson and Wales Wildcats out of North Carolina, Cameron Lewis currently the leading scorer right now for them. He has 11 uh, points to go with four rebounds. They've turned the ball over 13 times. They shot 39% in the first half. Shot only 14% from three. Now, they only attempted seven shots from three. This is a team that comes in shooting about 37% from three-point line. Right now, they're only shooting 14%. They were eight of nine from the free throw line. For the home builders, Courage Harrell led all scores for the builders with 11. Isaiah Jones ripped down six rebounds for the builders. Builders shot 41% in the first half. They were 38% from three, eight of 21. And they shot six of seven from the free throw line for 86%. No fast point break. No fast break points, I'm sorry. No fast break points for either team in the first half, but the Builders led bench scoring by a score of 18-5 to five as we get started. Up and good. Coach Evan Key and his basketball team start the second half outright with two as that Full court press is back on for the Builders. We saw that be so successful for them defensively in the first half, led to a couple of turnovers. But this time, this drive to the basket is going to result in a foul. So Isaiah Jones will be whistled for his second personal foul. That'll be the team's first. Now they call that in the act of shooting. I thought he was on his way to the basket, but that's going to put Mashida at the line, Nathan Mishita. Nathan Mishita now with six points in the contest. Comes in averaging about 12. Zoom it, zoom it. So he hits the second of two and he's almost pretty much about halfway to his scoring average. Better lead now at 12 with the feet on the baseline, unable to be handled by Kyrie Smith. So that is gonna be an opening half turnover for the Builders, that is now their 10th of the contest. Builders once again applying some pressure. But Mashida able to fend Means off with that forearm. And then almost was a turnover. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow is in favor of the Wildcats. So the basketball will remain on this end as I believe they want to try to want to try to wipe up the perspiration there in the lane. Player safety issue right now. So they're not going to put the ball back into play until someone comes over and wipes up some of the perspiration and we're doing that just now. Again, builders are winless against Johnson and Wales historically, not just this season, but historically. Builders with an 0 and 8 record versus the Wildcats. Shot clock at 15. As it goes inside to Mashita. Mashita has his shot blocked. Means with the outlet to Saunders. Saunders with the dish to Kyrie Smith, who's unable to convert. So here come the Wildcats. Things starting to get a little physical on the inside. As that long three-pointer comes off, no good. Means with the rebound. Tries to push it ahead to, to Wall. Had a hard time corralling it, but he did. As Means got into a little bit of trouble, but was able to get the outlet pass. Smith, his three-point shot is good. 
So that's the Builders' ninth make from the three-point arc in this basketball game, and I get a feeling we will see a few more of those before we get out of here. That long three-point shot, wow, by Nathan Mashita is good. He now has 10. As we're going to get a foul call. So Nathan Mashita is going to be whistled for his second. That'll be the first team foul of the second half. Mashita able to convert that three-point shot. That's only their second make of the afternoon. Mashita has one to go along with a corner three in the first half by Lawson. As that kick goes to the corner to Saunders, and Saunders hits another three. So the Builders now with 10 three-point shots made here in the basketball game. As the Builders pressure forces a turnover, Kyrie Smith, outlet dunk goes down. And the Builders now with their matching their largest lead of 17 in the contest. We have a timeout. Timeout being taken at the 17-25 mark. That's going to be a media timeout. So we're going to step away. We'll be back as the Builders now match their largest lead of the contest, 17. We'll be back. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. I am Fatima Medina, and I work for HII building the most powerful ships in the U.S. Navy. The digital technology I use is a generational change in the way that we build ships, making the construction of aircraft carriers more efficient. Plus, I get to work with veterans. Thanks to them, we all have our freedom and we need to work hard to keep it. I am Fatima Medina and I work for HII. It is going to be extremely difficult for Mark Slade's basketball team to get back in this one when the Builders are shooting almost the exact same percentage from three as they are from the floor. Builders right now shooting 80, I'm sorry, 48% from the floor and 43% from three as we're getting a violation. 10 second backcourt violation. That is now the 15th turnover forced by the Builder defense. As Natambu, Calhoun makes his way back in. So again, builders have forced 15 turnovers. Wildcats just force the builders 11. Builders now lead by 17. Tough shot. And the rebound taken by Jones. The Builders now with a 17-point lead again. That is their largest lead of the contest as Wall works off of a ball screen. Gets it to Saunders. Saunders is already hit from three. But they feed it inside to Jones. Jones moves. He's fouled. Wildcats thought he may have traveled. No call there as Jalen Benson Hollenhead will pick up his third personal foul, the team's second. So the Builders get an opportunity to build on a 17-point lead now. As Isaiah Jones will step to the line, he has four this afternoon. He averages five a contest. Builders have a team shoot about 62% from the free throw line as Isaiah Jones unable to convert. So Brandon Summers will come back in for the visiting Wildcats. Out of Charlotte, North Carolina. As Isaiah Jones hits his average on the season at five, Builder lead now at 18. That is their largest of the contest as Mashita back into the game, he's trapped in the corner. Wildcats able to solve the dilemma. 
get quickly back down court, draw the foul, and the basket will count. So Kyrie Smith is going to be whistled for his second personal foul, and that'll be the team's second. So Nintambu Calhoun will get an opportunity to complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way with the N1. Unable to do so, Saunders clears the defensive board. Here's Wall. Looking. Find Saunders, he launches from the corner for three. That one no good. Calhoun, trapped. I think we're gonna get a foul call out of it. So that foul call in the backcourt is gonna be on Donovan Means. That'll be his first personal foul in the team's third. Here's Calhoun being guarded closely by Means. Calhoun has the ball stripped. Builders force the turnover. That's now 16 for the Wildcats as the turnovers continue to mount. Here's Saunders. That one was last touched, I believe, by the Wildcats, so it'll stay on this end. as we are going to get a timeout. Okay, so we are gonna have a stoppage in play, folks. We have a media timeout being taken here at the Apprentice School Athletic Center. Builders with a big lead, we'll be back. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaysportCU.org to learn more. I am Fatima Medina, and I work for HII building the most powerful ships in the U.S. Navy. The digital technology I use is a generational change in the way that we build ships, making the construction of aircraft carriers more efficient. Plus, I get to work with veterans. Thanks to them, we all have our freedom and we need to work hard to keep it. I am Fatima Medina and I work for HII. Wildcats shooting about 39% from the field so far in the contest. Builders shooting 45%. But again, the big story right now is how efficient the builders have been from the three-point arc. But they've shot 41% from the three-point arc. As that one is up, shot no good, loose ball tipped around. But it looks like Hillenhead might have had his heel on the baseline, so the basketball will stay on this end. Shot clock resets to 20. Builders lead right now by 16. They've led by as many as 17. Means with the inbound. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Looks like the Wildcats have started to turn up the defensive pressure just a bit here. As that loose ball off the rebound is taken by Calhoun. Calhoun forces the issue, but he's able to get it out to Smith. It's Lawson, difficult shot. His rebound comes off to Smith. Smith, able to draw the personal. That's gonna be on Clifton Good. So for Clifton Good, that'll be his second. That'll be the team's first. So that'll send Ethan Smith to the free throw line. Ethan Smith comes into this afternoon's contest averaging about nine points a game. Right now he has five in the contest. Misses the first.
As a team, the Wildcats shoot about 70% from the charity stripe. Smith misses them both. But the Wildcats get the offensive board, and they get another foul. And I think this is going to be on Clifton Good again, and it is. So Clifton Good, on one trip down the floor, he picks up two fouls. So that will now put Nathan Mashita at the free throw line, and he hits. So Clifton Good is going to have a seat with a point in the basketball game, just one, but three fouls. So Mashita gets another one. And he hits them both. Light pressure now by the Wildcats off of the made free throw. Donovan Means gets it over to Saunders. Saunders looking. Harrell with the basketball, who's been stuck on 11 points for quite some time. He is still the leading scorer, scorer currently now for the Builders as the shot clock for Wall is now at five. Wall to Means. Means. His shot hit the support wire above the basket. So that is going to be a turnover. Well, actually, it hitting the wire is like it is like the rebound went out of bounds. So I'm not really sure if that technically counts as a turnover. As Means able to get it from Calhoun in the backcourt, but it goes right at Means, and he's going to be called. Wait a minute. I thought he signaled a player control foul, but instead it's going to be a personal foul. And that's going to go on Calhoun. So that will be Calhoun's first and the team's third. And they're going to say that Donovan Means was in the act of shooting. So Means right now with five in the basketball game, make it six. And the builder lead now is 15, 54-39. As Means knocks down the basket. Well, the free throw has now his seventh point of the contest. Go to lead now at 16. And we're going to get a foul by Harrell. So Harrell reaches in. That'll be his first personal foul in the team six. Sometimes you wonder what happens on a reach-in foul. Sometimes a on defense, you're not quite moving your feet as well, and you make up for it and compensate for it by reaching in. Sometimes you get called for a foul. So that out-of-bounds ball was last touched by the Builders. Smith with the inbound. Builders force another turnover thanks to that suffocating defense, but the Wildcats able to get back on defense with the block. Here's Harrell, and he's going to be whistled for the travel. So that is going to be turnover number 12 for the Builders, depending on how they counted one of the other ones, and it may be 13 now. Builder lead now at 16 as they are going to get a foul call. It's going to be on Kelby Saunders. So all of a sudden, things are really getting physical out here for both of these ball clubs as the fouls are starting to mount up a bit for the builders. Isaiah Jones will make his way into the contest, and they're going to send Nathan Mishita to the free throw line. Builders already in the bonus, folks. They already have seven team fouls. So things starting to get a little physical out here between these teams. As Mishita hits the first of two, Builder lead now down to 15. Still a lot of time left in this ball game. As Mishita hits the second, Builder lead now is down to 14. Means being guarded closely by Calhoun. Smith. Wall. 
with a kick out to Means. Builders at 10. Feed along the baseline. That pass intercepted. Back quickly with the basketball are the Wildcats unable to convert, but there's going to be a foul called on the other end. So that will be Curran Terrell's second, and that'll be the team's eighth. So that'll, I believe, put, I believe that was Lawson. I believe Lawson that was harassed. So that'll send Lawson to the free throw line right now. He has 11. So again, this one by no means over. 13, 17 left in the contest. Builders up by 14. So the Wildcats were able to cut into the builder lead and get it down somewhere around 10. Then we're, we're going to have a contest here in a minute. Jamin Mars will make his way back onto the floor, one of the starters for Coach Mark Slade. And the second of two by Lawson goes down. So the builders see their 17-point lead now trimmed to 12 as they go back on defense. Here's Means. Finds Wall. He launches from three. Wow. Builders kind of needed that one because builders were kind of struggling offensively here the past couple of trips down the floor, but nice job by Wall to catch the basketball in rhythm and able to get the three. Loose ball fought for underneath. And they're going to call a foul on the floor. So Isaiah Jones picks up his third. That's the Look, that's the team's ninth. We're at the 12.45 mark of the second half. One more team foul, and that will put the Wildcats into the double bonus for the rest of the contest. And for a team that is currently behind by 15, you want opportunities to score the basketball with the clock stopped. That's also our big three guys with three fouls. Yeah, the, the fouls are really, really starting to add up right now for the builders. As right now, Kelby Saunders, Isaiah Jones, and Clifton Good all have three in the contest as we're going to get a foul call. So Nathan Mashita is going to get that foul called against him. That'll be the fourth team foul, and that'll put that will put Adrian Wall at the free throw line. Adrian now with 11 in the contest has an opportunity to add to not only his point total but to the lead. He makes the first of two. Remember a, a moment ago he hit a three-point shot that the builders really needed because. The builders have, had went into a, a little bit of a scoring drought here in the second half, so he was able to uh, bring thirst, I mean, bring water to the masses on that one. And he's able to hit both of his free throws. So he has the builders' last five points. And they push the lead back up to 17. Come on. So not only do the Wildcats need to score, just like they did right there with Nathan Mishita. They have to play defense if Coach Slade's basketball team have any shot at getting back in this one. Wall launches. Back of the iron. Here come the Wildcats. This long three-point shot hits the front of the iron. Loose ball is saved to Harrell. Smith in the corner, back. To Courage Harrell, and there's a three-point basket made, and we're going to go, and that's going to lead us right into a media timeout as Adrian Harrell adds to his point total. He now has 14 in the contest, and that's pushed the builder lead all the way up to 18. That is now officially their largest lead of the contest. 11.39 left here at the Apprentice School Athletic Center. We'll be back. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. 
That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit bayportcu.org to learn more. I am Fatima Medina, and I work for HII, building the most powerful ships in the U.S. Navy. The digital technology I use is a generational change in the way that we build ships, making the construction of aircraft carriers more efficient. Plus, I get to work with veterans. Thanks to them, we all have our freedom, and we need to work hard to keep it. I am Fatima Medina, and I work for HII. Builders now 12 of 29 from the three-point arc. That's 41% in the contest. As the inbound is taken by Mashita Lawson. Off of the ball screen, I thought he traveled there. And instead, there's going to be a foul. Now that is Kelby Saunders' fourth foul. That is the team's 10th, which now puts the Wildcats in the double bonus for the remaining 11-22 of the contest. Listen to this, folks. The Builders now have more team fouls than the Wildcats have turnovers. Builders with 20 team fouls, Wildcats with 19 turnovers, as Clifton Good will make his way into the contest. Saunders will sit down. He has four. Jones has three. And into the game, Clifton Good, he has three. As Mashita hits the free throw. Builder lead down to 16 with 11-17 left. Here's Good. I'm sorry, Wall. His, his three-point shot comes off to Lawson. Lawson. In the corner to Mashita, who shuffled his feet before he drilled, he drilled the basketball. That is a turnover. That is now 20 turnovers for the Wildcats. Away, away, away. Away, away. Means being guarded by Calhoun. Wall at 15 on the shot clock. Wall makes his move. The runner up and good. So the builder lead is now 65-47. Only three lead changes in the contest. Again, once the builders took the lead, folks, they just have not surrendered it. Wildcats, have, the closest they've been in a while has been eight as Mashita is finally called for that forearm shiver. Use that to try to create a little bit of space to get his shot off. Ended up being called for his fourth personal foul. So that'll be his fourth and the team's fifth. So Mashita is going to have a seat now. Depending on how out of hand this basketball game gets on the scoreboard, you may not see Mashita until about the five-minute mark. And we're at 10-18 right now. Smith, bumped, no call. Wall, tough runner on the baseline. That shot is up and good, and just like that, Adrian Wall has quietly scored 17 points. The builder lead now is 20 in the contest. As Calhoun is unable to convert offensively, so back come the builders with Wall. Wall, fake the three. Ended up passing it inside to a wide open Clifton Good who banks it off the glass for two. And the builders start to pull away as they force another turnover. Builders now with a 22 point lead. As Coach Mark Slade starts to feel this one slipping just a bit. It's good underneath his reverse layup, no good, but he was fouled.
So Jalen Benson Hollenhead will pick up his fourth personal foul. That'll be the team's sixth. So Clifton Good, who right now, prior to this free throw, has three points in the contest. Make it four. Avon Hawkins in for the Builders, along with Ethan Smith and Brandon Summers. Builder lead now at 23, 9, 16 left in the contest. Builders looking to snap an eight-game losing streak to Johnson and Wells. And when you do stuff like that, that'll put you well on your way to netting your first win against Johnson and Wells in series history. Builders now with a 24-point lead. Wildcats work the perimeter. Lawson. Jumper no good. Rebound clear. So here's Wall. Builders with a golden opportunity to extend their home winning streak to nine games. This means it's fouled. That foul call is going to go on Isaiah Escobar. That'll be his first personal foul of the team seven. So Donovan means at the line to shoot two. Looking to add to a huge lead right now, 24 on the scoreboard. Make it 25. So as always, in order for the Wildcats to have a realistic chance of getting back into the contest, they need to have this deficit down to 10. Somewhere around about the five minute mark. Right now it's at 25 at the eight and a half minute mark. The Builders have done an amazing job of converting turnovers into points this afternoon against the Wildcats. As again, they force another turnover. Here's Means, Means. Knifing to the basket. Ball goes out of bounds, but it was last touched by the Wildcats. Good, works inside. His left-hander, no good. But once again, underneath, he is fouled. So that call will be on Ethan Smith. That is his second in the team's eighth. So Clifton Good, who was just at the free throw line just a moment ago, finds himself back at the charity stripe, looking to add to his five-point total. Unable to do so. So Adriel De La Rosa will make his way into the contest as Coach Slade is starting to dig pretty deep into his bench. Good makes the second. He now has six. And the builder lead right now is 26. Builders again, defensive pressure. Has not been handled well this afternoon by the Wildcats as the Wildcats able to get the loose ball off of the rebound and they commit another turnover, and that's going to be a travel as we're going to get a stoppage in play. We're going to have a timeout. Media timeout, the under eight-minute timeout. So we'll have a stoppage here momentarily. Builders up big by 26, 73-47. We'll be back. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. I am Fatima Medina, and I work for HII building the most powerful ships in the U.S. Navy. 
The digital technology I use is a generational change in the way that we build ships, making the construction of aircraft carriers more efficient. Plus, I get to work with veterans. Thanks to them, we all have our freedom and we need to work hard to keep it. I am Fatima Medina and I work for HII. Cameron Lawson for the Wildcats has pretty much played every single minute of the contest. He has 15 in the ball game as Rashida, I'm sorry, Mashida, Nathan Mashida, he's played 27 points, he's got 16. So at some point in time, fatigue is going to start to set in for some of these guys from the Wildcats, if it hasn't already. Guys have played a lot of minutes this afternoon as the builders start to pull away on the scoreboard. 26. That long rebound comes off to the builders. Long three-point attempt by the builders. No good. So back come the Wildcats with, again, Lawson, who's played pretty much every second of this contest. Escobar, his reverse hand layup, no good. So here comes Harrell. Hawkins able to split the double team, but they're going to say no shot that he was fouled on the floor. He's going to be fouled or whistled for the personal is Escobar. That'll be a second personal foul in the team's ninth. So one more foul and the builders will be in the double bonus for the remainder of the contest. The Wildcats are already there. They've been in there for like almost five minutes now, the double bonus, as Avon Hawkins hits the first of two. So he now has seven. Misses the second. Bitterly stays at 27. Smith. Working against Harrell. Smith in the lane. Able to create a little bit of space between himself and Harrell. But Smith unable to get it, get it to go down. Wall. Builders continue to work the perimeter. Here's Harrell. Harrell. And they're going to get him for, I thought they were going to get him for a travel, but instead they're going to call a foul. So De La Rosa will pick up his first. That'll be the team's 10th. So now the Builders in the double bonus. So Adrian Harrell gets an opportunity to go to the line. He looking to add to his 14 points in the contest. Unable to do so, but he will get one more. So both teams now in the double bonus for the 6-14 remaining in the contest. Drains the second of two. So the builder lead now sits at 28. Hawkins harassing Escobar is going to be whistled for the foul. So the builders again in the, well, I'm sorry, the Wildcats now in the double bonus for the remaining 6.04 of the contest. So that will put Isaiah Escobar at the free throw line. The six foot junior guard out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, hits the first of two. And he hits them both. Build a lead now, trim to 26. Wall. Hawkins. Thought about rising up for the three, but instead finds a lane, a clear lane to the to the basket. And he's able to lay it off the glass for two. So the builder lead is back up to 28 once again. 
as Escobar works against Hawkins. Escobar able to hit Isaiah Escobar. He now has four. 5-18 left in the basketball game. Hawkins. Wall, his runner, no good. Thought he was fouled. No whistle. Fast break opportunity for the Wildcats. As that step back three is good. So Lawson will be credited with that. Cameron Lawson will be credited with that corner three. 4.52 remaining in the contest. Coach Evan Key calls a timeout. Builders with a huge lead in the contest. 77-54. We will be back. How much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. I am Fatima Medina, and I work for HII building the most powerful ships in the U.S. Navy. The digital technology I use is a generational change in the way that we build ships, making the construction of aircraft carriers more efficient. Plus, I get to work with veterans. Thanks to them, we all have our freedom and we need to work hard to keep it. I am Fatima Medina and I work for HII. I mentioned earlier that at the pace that the Wildcats were playing, they were probably going to turn the basketball over somewhere around about 24 times. They are currently at 24 at the moment. So my Nostradamus-type skills come into play here this afternoon in this basketball game as the Builders just want to eat up this clock and get out of here. Mean shot at the rim, no good. Builder still with a huge lead in the contest. Escobar nearly lost it. Smith able to get it back. Smith able to hit. So Ethan Smith now with seven in the basketball game. Builder lead now down to 21. Builders have led by as many as 28 this afternoon. Smith able to work. I mean, he put the he put the defender in the spin cycle and was able to finish at the rim for an easy two. So the builder lead is back up to 23. Step back three. That one is an air ball by Cameron Lawson. So again, Cameron Lawson has played the entire basketball game as we get a timeout. Timeout on the floor at the 337 mark. That is the four under four minute media timeout. That'll be the last media timeout of the contest. We'll how much you earn has a lot to do with how much you learn. That's why Bayport Credit Union is again investing in your continued education. Through our Bayport Foundation, we're giving $100,000 in tuition assistance to area high school seniors, college students, and working adults attending a university, trade, or vocational school. Everyone deserves to be happy, healthy, and financially wise. Visit BaytportCU.org to learn more. I am Fatima Medina, and I work for HII building the most powerful ships in the U.S. Navy. The digital technology I use is a generational change in the way that we build ships, making the construction of aircraft carriers more efficient. Plus, I get to work with veterans. Thanks to them, we all have our freedom and we need to work hard to keep it. I am Fatima Medina and I work for HII. Builders have turned 24 Wildcat turnovers into 26 points. Builders have shot 43% from the field. They come into this afternoon averaging about 46% from the, from the field. So they're right on pace about what they normally shoot. 
Builders averaging about 85 points a game. They're still on pace for that currently. Here's Means. Hawkins looking inside, unable to get it in there to Isaiah Jones. So they kick it over to Saunders. And Saunders able to drain it from three. So that is now the Builders' 13th make from three. They're shooting about 38% from the three-point arc on the afternoon. And they push their lead up to 26. Fee goes inside. Wild shot. But that's going to send the Wildcats to the line. As Jalen Benson Hollandhead able to draw the foul on Donovan Means. So that'll be Donovan Means' second personal. And, of course, both teams are already in the double bonus. So by the time the end of this contest comes, this will be probably the most foul field basketball game for the builders that we've seen in quite some time. My last count, they were at 19. I think they're right now somewhere around about 21, 22 fouls, total team fouls in the contest. As that one goes down. So 83 to 58 is our score. Some pressure put on by the Wildcat defense as that runner by Hawkins. That one is no good. Fast break opportunity now for the Wildcats. So the end is Hollandhead. Builders not quite being efficient with their transition defense. And that leads to two easy points on the other end. But the Builder lead still pretty sizable at 22. And we're just a little over two minutes remaining. Whistle underneath. They're going to credit Isaiah Jones with that one. That's his fourth. So Jalen Benson Hollenhead was set to the line to try to add to his point total. He now has seven in the contest, comes in averaging close to 13. Six foot eight junior, misses the second. Here comes Saunders. Let's get pass all the way over to Smith. We're now under two minutes left. Smith able to get it inside to Jones. Jones just does the work and is able to put it in for two. So Isaiah Jones now with seven. As Mashida continues to score. I told you Mashida has played darn near every minute of the contest when he wasn't on the bench for fouls. Builders getting really, really close to exercising their demons against Johnson and Wells. As the Builders coming into this afternoon's contest not having won in eight tries against this team historically. So they get an opportunity to exercise some demons by getting out of here with their first win against the Wildcats. Coach Evan Key is looking to net his 15th victory of the season and remain number one on top of the USCAA polls. As we're now under one minute left in the contest, Builders looking to eat clock. Builders with a 21, I'm sorry, a 19, 29 point lead as that one is blocked. Back come the Wildcats now. With Calhoun, Calhoun with the crossover. Kick in the corner. That three comes off to Smith, who's able to duck underneath the defense of Jones and lay it in for the left-handed layup. Hawkins plays a little bit of takeaway with Jones. 
Shot clock now, or game clock now with 15. No shot clock. Builders can just dribble it out for the remaining 12, 11 seconds of the contest. And Coach Evan Key and the Builders will exercise their demons against the Wildcats of Johnson and Wells, and they will get their first victory in eight tries and extend their home unbeaten win streak by a score of 84 to 65. Builder defense absolutely stifling this afternoon, forcing 24 turnovers for the Wildcats while converting those into 26 points. That is efficient, and that is how the Builders are able to get out of here with their 15th victory of the season. So after this, the Builders will improve to 15 and four, stay on top of the polls in the USCAA, number one in the country. This has been a fantastic basketball game. This is exactly how we want them to always go whenever the Builders take the floor. But we're gonna step away and we're gonna say good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Builders get an 84-65 victory here at the Apprentice School Athletic Center. So for Dave Davenport, I am Howard McCain. So long, we'll see you next time. And until then, remember, this is Builder Basketball.